Hey there guys, my name is Jordan and this is my home. She's a 1986 Toyota Hiace with a pop top roof and as of two and a half weeks ago it is now my full time home and office on wheels. So in this video I wanted to show you guys the process I went through in converting it into a camper van and then give you a detailed tour and a look of the inside and show you how I've got everything set up. So let's get into it. So after buying the van, the first thing I did was completely gut the inside. It was set up as a basic camper, but it was old, it smelt weird, and it just wasn't set up how I needed it. Once I had a blank slate, I started by laying down a timber frame for the floor. Then I put down earth wall insulation and covered it with a vapour barrier. I then made the vapour barrier as airtight as possible by sticking down the edges with aluminium tape. Shout out to mum and dad for helping throughout various stages of the build. Next I put down the plywood floor and screwed it into the timber frame. This was going to be my home, so it was really important to insulate it the best that I could. I made a timber frame for the walls and then covered them in a vapour barrier. Then I screwed pine lining boards into that timber frame. Then I framed up the shelves that would go beside the bed. After the shelves, I built the frame for the bed, 30 centimeters off the ground so I could have storage underneath. And once the bed was completed, it was on to building the kitchen. Because I was so focused on finishing the van, this is all the build footage I have. So I spent two and a half months converting the van, probably spending about six hours a day on it. I paid six grand for the van and I think I spent around four on the conversion. I think that's pretty good for a home. So welcome to the kitchen. I like to cook so I prioritised having a decent size kitchen in the van and tried to make the most of the small amount of space that I've got to work with. So this is the sink, I just reused it from the old camper conversion and changed the position of the tap, that's why there's this black a little bit of rubber here to cover up the hole. Uh, it's a hand pump tap that is connected to this uh, 23 litre water container at the bottom here. Uh, it's made of glass, it's a brewing demijohn. I don't like to drink out of plastic if I can avoid it, so this was the best solution I could think of as a cheap solution. Um, in the future, I'd probably like to get a custom tank fitted for under the van, but for now, this is working really well. I've got a ratchet strap here that is uh, screwed into the wall and it's securing this really well. So when I'm driving, it's not moving, it's just staying put. So it's a hand pump tap that the drinking water hose just sits in the water in the demijohn. And then I can just go like this and I've got drinking water. And so the sink drains into this 20 litre jerry can here that I can just take out and empty. It's also secured to the wall so it doesn't move around. And I've plumbed it into the sink and just made this drain trap here um, just out of hose fittings and the old hose from the original van. And this stops smell from the jerry can coming back up into the sink. That's what this uh, shape here does. I've also got these fancy magnetic springy cupboard openers that I was pretty pleased with. And this is just a simple two burner camping gas cooker that I've taken the lid off and screwed it into the bench so it's secured and the gas line comes in through the bench and the gas bottle sits in its own fiberglass housing uh, under here that's vented to the outside. 
You can get fancier cooktops that are all stainless steel and they sink into the bench, but they're like eight times the price of one of these. So I just went with this and it's been working great. So this is a drawer here that slides out and I keep my cutlery in there and other cooking utensils. I was gonna have three drawers along here, but making one of these was enough of a pain in the ass that I just decided to have another cupboard. And in here I keep um, saucepan, frying pan, bowls and stuff. And below there I keep my compost bin, recycling and rubbish and just other bits and pieces. And so I tried to use as many recycled materials as I could in this van. And so these bench tops here are just an old bed head that I found on the side of the road in Melbourne. And I just sanded them back and stained it and they look amazing. So I'm super happy with those. And so these are pine lining boards that I got from the tip for $20. There were probably like 300 bucks worth of timber that was being thrown away. It had just been taken out of an old house and so I picked it up and used it everywhere I could. I just sanded it back and stained it and used it for the cupboard doors here and for the lining of the entire van. And under here is the electrical system. So I've got three 160 watt solar panels on the roof and that is fed down into the van into this breaker box here and then into this 60 amp charge controller. And I've got a 130 amp hour deep cycle AGM battery here. And then a 375 watt inverter. I did have two 130 amp hour batteries in parallel, but when I was wiring this all up, I was rushing and accidentally fried the other battery. It was pretty devastating. Um, but I plan to buy another one in a couple of months time and then just pop it back in here and um, join them back up in parallel. And for the 12 volt stuff, the connection goes from the charge controller up into the fuses here. And then I've got this switch panel on the front here. Um, for the lights, as you can see, I've just got these little fairy lights. I love how they look, just pinned up around the whole edge of the van. Uh, I've got a switch for the fridge and one for the pump which is underneath the van and that powers my gas shower. And here I've got a little USB port here for charging my phone and other things that are connected via USB. So this is my fridge that is connected to the solar setup. It's a Waco CF40 and it's been great so far. It doesn't use much power and it's big enough for what I need. For ventilation, I've also got a 12 volt exhaust fan in the roof. So here's my bed. It's a futon mattress under here and I've built it 30 centimeters off the ground so I could have storage underneath here. So there's hinges in the middle and the slats fold up from each end and the storage can be accessed from either inside here or from outside at the back of the van. So the bed isn't long enough for me to sleep on in its state like this. So I've got an extension that sits under the mattress here that I can pull out and it slots in at the end and then I can have two meters of bed space, which is how tall I am. So um, if I had two meters of bed, it would just take up too much room. Um, so I've made this little extendable part. And the bed extension doubles as my desk. So I can take the extension out and put it into these bits of timber here and then put the legs down and then I've got a little surface that I can put my computer, mouse, keyboard and I've got my little office here. So you can kind of think of this as version one of the van. It's probably going to be an ever evolving design but now that I'm living in it there are small tweaks that I'd like to make um, that I've become aware of since actually using the space and living here full time. So one of those things I'd like to tweak is the desk setup. Because I have to sit on the bed cross-legged, I can only do that for about 40 minutes or an hour before my legs start to hurt and I need to go for a walk, which is fine, but if I need to work for longer periods of time, it's just a bit uncomfortable. And yeah, there's just little finishing touches I'd like to make one day. Because I was so keen to get on the road, I just did kind of the what I had to do to make it livable and functional. Um, and there are some bits and pieces that are still unfinished, like the edge of the door here where you can see the insulation. I'm kind of excited about that, that I can continually just work on it and refine it and tweak it as I go. 
And over here I've got my shelves. So I've got food stored up here and down here. And then on this side I've got computer stuff and camera gear and um, other electronics. And then I've got clothing underneath uh, just down here. And this is my hot water bottle, Whaley. I like Whaley, it keeps me warm. And over here is my little bookshelf that I can fit a small amount of books in. I've just made it out of plywood and some brackets that are screwed into the shelving. So this is my shower setup. I've got a gas camping shower here that I've just mounted some brackets onto the van that I can just hang it on. Uh, this is connected to the gas bottle which lives in here. And I've got a water container that is plumbed into the pump that's underneath the van. And then the pump goes into the unit and then out the shower head and I've got hot water. And I've got a shower tent that I can just set up in front of the unit and I've got a shower. So I hope you all enjoyed this little look at my home. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll make a video just dedicated to answering a bunch of questions. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.